Stardew Valley. In the past, I've loved most Harvest Moon games. If you remember my first Harvest Moon game that I reviewed, I became obsessed with my farm. Plus the two Wii Harvest Moon games that I reviewed were pretty good as well. However, lately, they don't seem to be as much fun. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I didn't have the time for them. Or maybe I didn't want to sink hours and hours into them when the gameplay didn't look as fun. I did have the same issues with Stardew when I bought it last year. I thought it would sink me in and have me playing and running my farm once again. But it didn't. However, I decided to give it a try again. And I'm glad I did. My plan to review this title was to experience a whole year in the game, and I did that, and it took me 32 hours. Now, I had planned on stopping there, but seeing how I am now a quarter of the way through fall in year two, I don't see that happening. Graphically, it looks like a Super Nintendo game, and that's not really surprising, as it's heavily influenced by the original Harvest Moon game. What's odd about this is that I ran into quite a few times where the game wouldn't run smoothly, and there was noticeable lag. And you would think a game like this wouldn't be taxing the graphical processors of the Switch. My only guess is there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, and sometimes the Switch can't keep up. This is a very minor issue, but it is noticeable. They did let you change how your character looks, but both of the times that I started up my new game, my character looked like a duck from a certain angle, and I would have a creepy smile if I faced the camera. It was a strange choice to have as an avatar. Stardew Valley doesn't care what you do in the game. Play it any way you want. If you want to focus on farming, you can. If you'd rather go fish, go for it. Or if you just want to wander around finding objects to sell, you can do that as well. While farming will make you the most, it's never required. I did like all the choices this game had. It kept things fresh and not always the same. Every day I did something different. Maybe I visited a traveling saleswoman. Or maybe I went mining for gold. Or maybe I just cleaned out my farm. There are also characters who live their own lives throughout the town you can interact with. Sometimes cutscenes would happen which would flesh out the characters in the town, depending on your friendship level. There are over 25 characters to interact with, and they would do different things at different times. They would often want favors and they would give you cash, and those favors would also increase their friendship levels with you. And if it was high enough, you might even get to marry them. Each season consists of 28 days. Spring, summer, fall, winter. They have their own look and different things happen in them. Plants that grow in one season may not grow in another. Keeping track of the days and planning accordingly is essential. Also knowing how the weather will play out the next day is very useful as well. There's a TV that gives you that information, as well as new recipes that you can make with your fruit and vegetables that you grow. Each day starts at 6 a.m. and ends at 2 a.m. If you stay up past 1 a.m., you'll lose half of your stamina bar. And if you don't go to sleep by 2 a.m., you pass out and people rob you. Nice little town you're living in. Unlike the Harvest Moon games that I played, I think you get more time than you might expect to do stuff. When I was playing Harvest Moon games, I always felt like I was rushing the clock when I was playing. In this one, it felt like there was plenty of time to do whatever random thing I wanted to do after I did my chores. They give you a stamina meter that you can upgrade over time, or you can eat to increase it as well. But that clock of 2 a.m. is always there. They did give you free actions like walking around or swinging a sword or a sickle, so that was helpful. When farming, you can upgrade your tools to make it easier to do, so it takes less time. For example, the watering can can be upgraded to not just splash one section, but multiple sections at a time. So a crop that might take 60 seconds to water might only take 20 seconds with the upgrades. These upgrades always needed the ore that you could find in the mines. The deeper you go, the better the ores. So you're going to want to try and get to the bottom of the mine as soon as possible, so you can get the best tools. You can get cows and chickens that produce milk and eggs, as well as a sheep that gives you wool. You can buy a pig, but you can't get bacon out of it. You get truffles. You can choose to feed them inside or outside as long as the weather permits it. Fishing was a bit problematic when you first start out. You have to move the bar with the fish indicator, and if you're out of the bar's reach for too long, you're going to lose the fish. This way of fishing is more interactive, but I'm sure it's going to frustrate new players. You're going to lose a lot of fish to this gameplay style. It does get easier over time as the bar increases and the fish slow down. There are three different types of water to fish in, river, lake, and ocean. Different fish will show up in different seasons, and even different times of the day. Even the rain can be a factor in finding the specific fish that you're looking for. I did have an issue finding the lake in this game. It's not as obvious as you might think. There is a body of water south of the farm which acts and looks like a lake, but the game treats it as a river. Why can't it be a lake? It even has a pier! It's frustrating because I thought for quite a few seasons that was the lake I needed to get fish from, only to find out at some random area next to the mine that that was the lake that they're referring to. It looks no different than the body of water south of me, so why is that not considered the lake as well? Now the world was just about the right size. You could walk around it fairly quickly. There was objects like coffee that would speed up your character, or horses that would really speed up your character. It was kind of interesting because when you're on the horse, you can feel the vibrations as you're going down the pathways. But as you're walking across the bridges, the vibrations get less. It was just a weird little touch. 
There's a community center which gives you bundles of items to find and deliver. If you do it, the building becomes more repaired, and you get new items to help you around the farm. By finishing all the particular bundles in the part that they're in, you're going to find a new change to the world. One of my favorites was the mine cards that would be fixed. It was the easiest to do and the most helpful. It was basically a fast travel system which was essential for getting around quickly. Even 30 hours in, I was finding new things in the world. A hidden forest, statues with cryptic sayings, a mystery quest that has you going searching for things to find. If you don't want to advance the storyline in the game, don't. Just ignore them. While they're nothing jaw-breaking, they are fun distractions for you to do. I mostly played this on the TV, and I kept wishing you could zoom in the camera. It felt a little far away. Unfortunately, there is no option that I could find to do that. Oddly enough, when you're playing this in handheld mode, it actually zooms in automatically. The same zoom in I wanted on the TV. So the game knows it's too zoomed out, but only corrects it for the handheld. Stardew Valley was a lot of fun. In fact, I'm still playing it. That's something I can't say about a lot of the games that I review afterwards. I often need to move on and play something else to review. However, I don't want to stop. I want to see what happens when the community center is completed. I want to find out why a witch occasionally flies over my farm. I think this game is definitely worth a buy. If you're looking for a game that will suck you in and make you obsess about the world that you're inhabiting, this game is for you. At $15, there's more than enough content, and I can't recommend it any stronger. You should definitely buy it now.